So, I've got a confession to make. I've only beaten one of the original Mega Man games. It was Mega Man 2, and in all honesty, it was the Game Boy version, so... When it comes to NES Mega Man games, I'm a rookie. I decided to go back and start playing the series at its roots, Mega Man 1. And you know the one thing I learned? Kids these days have it too easy. Released in Japan and North America in December 1987, Mega Man was the first in what would become Capcom's most popular gaming franchise of all time. The game follows the story of Mega Man, a robot created by Dr. Wright, who would go on to be renamed Dr. Light in the later titles. Dr. Wright and his assistant Dr. Wily created six robot masters in addition to Mega Man and his robot sister Rolls. These advanced robots were tasked with assisting humankind in various ways. It seems as Dr. Wily grew jealous of Dr. Wright because he reprograms the six robot masters to follow his bidding and take over the world. Dr. Wright sends Mega Man to stop Wily and his evil intentions. Gameplay Mega Man is an action adventure platformer credited with being the first game to ever feature a stage select screen. This feature would be a stepping stone for games that feature multiple objectives that could be completed in any order like Skyrim and Red Dead Redemption. As Mega Man completes each stage and defeats each robot master with his pellet firing Mega Buster, he gains the signature of attack of each one. Defeating Cut Man earns you access to the rolling cutter, Fireman grants you the fire shield. These secondary attacks not only give you alternate ways to take care of obstacles, but provide a rock paper scissors method of taking down each boss. A Lek Man is normally very dangerous, but Rolling Cutter will snip his wires in just a few hits. Guts Man's rocky stature will crumble before the awesome explosiveness of a hyperbomb. Once you finally defeat all six robot masters, it's time to head into Wily's Fortress. This set of four stages will test your skills like none of the six stages before. At the end of each of these grueling areas was a sub-boss, each more difficult than the last, except for maybe the bubble machine in the third stage. Along the way you'd have to face each robot master a second time, ending in the climactic battle with Wily himself. This style of gameplay is still being used in Mega Man games to this day, and is one of the best, most classic formulas out there. Grade A Controls Not much to talk about, just like with any other NES game. D-pad to move left and right, or climb up and down ladders, jump with A, shoot with B. Everything responds well, but there's something about Mega Man's controls that feels imperfect. Like it's never doing exactly what you want it to do, resulting in a much clunkier feel than in fluid platformers like Super Mario Bros. Overall, it works for what you need it to do. Nothing more, nothing less. Grade B-. minus. Difficulty. I try not to let my difficulty score weigh into my final decision. As such, I give it a difficulty rating out of 10, higher numbers meaning more difficult. As for Mega Man, this game reminded me of what old games used to all be. Hard, not Dark Souls, want to throw your controller against the wall, burn the console in a ritual to send it to the dark bowels of the Earth's core hard, but fun hard, rewarding hard, feels good to get through it hard. There's not really a point where it feels impossible. But there are times where you have to sit the controller down, take a deep breath, and hit continue on the game over screen. Which is something kids just don't get to see enough of these days. Difficulty rating, 8 out of 10. Fun Factor Despite the difficulty, Mega Man is fun. 
Many of the puzzles and platforming segments will have you feeling like you're playing a fun game. The colors are bright, vivid, and only ever so often does the game feel dark, like in the Fireman stage. The boss fights, for the most part, are entertaining, especially if you're using the Mega Buster because you don't know the weakness. I think the fun factor is a huge contributor to not making the game frustratingly difficult. Plus, the music is great in practically all the stages, except one notable exception, the Wily's Fortress sub-boss theme. Grade B. Final rating. 8.6 out of 10. Great. Mega Man reminded me of how great old non-Nintendo games really were, and how games of today can only be considered true classics if later down the road they can be played decades after their release and still bring a smile to your face. Things I liked. The difficulty was high, but rarely controller-breakingly frustrating. The music is wonderful for most stages. Very colorful for a game of its time. Creative platforming elements such as disappearing block puzzles and platforms that shoot at you. Ability to create your own platforms was very unique at the time. Boss weaknesses for the most part made sense. And it reminds you of what an old game was. Game over screens until you get it right. Things I disliked. Some music, such as the sub-boss battle theme in Wily's Fortress, was extremely repetitive and annoying. The Fireman battle rarely involves pattern memorization, just plain out shooting. That spot in Wily's Fortress one that requires you to get a game over if you don't already have the magnet beam is very frustrating for a new player who's going through without a strategy guide. Gutsman's attack super arm is fairly useless outside of Cutman's fight and against the bubble machine in Wily's Fortress 3. Dr. Wily felt a bit too easy and unsatisfying as a final boss, and the scoring system was really unnecessary. Thanks for checking out my review of Mega Man for the NES. If you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel as I will be posting more in the future. I'm also a budding Let's Player, so check those out as well. Be sure to head over to Everything Reviewed by following the link in the description for more reviews on, well, everything. This is Dragonborn Rito, signing off.